Hey everyone, it's Sarah with Home for Humanity Real Estate. Um, I recently decided that my tagline is Humanitarian Real Estate Services. <laughs> and because I'm so interested in um, not a human-centric um, environment, but because I am interested in humans living in good relationship with their place of home and their communities, um, I got involved in government affairs last year and I became a member of the Realtors Political Action Committee and that paid off last week during an experience um, where I went to Olympia, the capital, and got to experience Hill Day for the Realtors. And so I have, quickly, a little review of the legislative agenda and what Realtors are focusing on. Interestingly, there is a lot of housing bills going on right now, a lot, and because we had about 15 minutes to really talk with legislators about this. I met with a few different representatives and senators, and we had four major talking points that I'm going to go over. Um, number one is lot splitting. I'm going to actually interview Andrew Barkas, the writer for this bill, pretty soon on my podcast because I met him at a meetup recently, and he's excited to talk about that and other like nature-connected practices like scout programs, so that's cool. But lot splitting would essentially allow you to create two lots out of one. If you already had one that could build a house, if you had another space that you could add a home, um, one senator's concern was like, yeah, as long as the infrastructure is there, like water and utilities, and that's a good point. If there are 2,000 homes and enough water to maintain those 2,000 homes, would essentially doubling the lot space be a good idea? Um, or like this, doubling the housing be a good idea? And so there are some concerns there, and so that's one thing that's getting worked on. And just like this next talking point, um, there needs to be some limitations and some well thought out things. And so the, the next one is the detached accessory dwelling units in rural areas. They were working on this last year, it didn't go through. There is the theory that it probably won't go through this year either because there needs to be a lot of limitations on big changes like this. So right now inside of King County only, inside of their growth management or growth, um, urban growth area out in what is inside of the urban growth area in King County, you can put on a detached accessory dwelling unit, like a little cabin. Um, they call them dadus. So right, right now dadus are illegal outside of the urban growth area. So rural um, communities and anything outside of that line, you can only have attached accessory dwelling units, which means you can condoize your home, you can attach 3,000 square feet extra to a 2,000 square feet house, but you cannot add a 600 square foot, 400 square foot, 500, 1,000 square foot manufactured house even, ready to go, license and everything. You can't put it on the land even if you, if you, even if you have the energy and utilities to do so. So I find that interesting. There is a lot of environmental groups that are coming down in opposition for this change, and I can un understandably so, but my question still is, like, how do we limit the attached versus detached? And I think this is th just the very reason that this is an issue, that you can't have small houses on land anymore, blows my mind, because the average size of a house in, like, the 40s was, like, 800 square feet. The average size of a house now is like 3,000, and that's all they're building. And so what we're seeing now is that only big, big houses are allowed to be built, but not tiny ones. And even tiny ones have to be retrofitted with all these extra insulation and stuff that isn't necessarily needed because it's already efficient. It's already an energy efficient home simply because of how small it is. 500 square foot house um, should be legal out in the country um, with limitations. You don't want investors coming in and tearing down all the trees um, like they're already doing inside city limits and not all I don't want to give investors a bad name But sometimes when people are only focused on the money in real estate Issues happen limitations aren't a bad thing um, So the next one that the RPAC focused on anyway was increasing housing supply through transit-oriented development You see where I've scratched out its last year's bills num bill numbers versus this year's um, They're going through revisions this year during the short session in 2024. So we'll see how things, um, where the cookie crumbles fall, that's the phrase. Anyway, so this is an incentive to create more housing um, along main, main um, transit pathways. So the light rail, being able to um, put more things along the light rail, more housing along the light rail. There is tax exemptions, and again, I met a legislator who doesn't really agree with tax exemptions or benefits, 
um, to developers for putting for putting anything for putting housing anywhere. Um, so it is this question of like, well, we are we're here to talk about moves, and there is so much not in these uh, little talking points that is being discussed in the legislature right now, such as rent control, such as excise tax, such as home equity sharing agreements, such as workplace housing, such as appraiser concerns, um, such as urban growth areas consistency with infrastructure. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's even a co-housing bill right now, like House Bill 1998. It's a different number for the Senate, but I don't know. It, it essentially, it, it, it more or less legalizes like boarding houses, like a shared kitchen. Um, there's a lot of, but there's a lot of things even in that bill that need to be reworded because like bathrooms are mentioned. Um, so there, that's always an issue with, and so that leaves room actually for local jurisdictions to come in and add their own limitations to prevent, in some cases, that's the, that's how they prevent these types of housing ideas from happening is cities block them in their own way by adding more regulations and limitations. Like I said, li li limitations aren't bad, but too much means that we have all these little isolated issues and altogether we have a crisis on our hands, which is why the fourth bullet point that they suggested was do no harm. The housing market is fragile and so big changes right now could could really change, um, could, could do a lot of damage. But personally, I think big changes might be what's needed. Um, this is really tricky stuff. I don't, I have some opinions, but um, I don't know if they're all fully, fully formed opinions yet or fully educated opinions because there is so many moving parts like Hilde taught me. Um, there are so many moving parts to these things. And my big takeaway was that five, 10 minutes with your legislator um, is not going to do a big, it's not going to make a huge impact as far as educating them on specifics of the housing industry, which is why um, an organization like RPAC and Washington Realtors is really cool to get the opportunity to sit with them. But like I said, I, I met um, Representative Barkas at a different meetup, and I and I wonder if getting people more involved. Um, in the day-to-day -day workflow, getting them in positions of legislative power would be meaningful instead of, you know, this like consultation type um, system that we have with legislators, like career politicians as opposed to business people running the show. But why I do what I do is because most people don't have the energy to do all their own in-depth research anyway. So I will have more on these bills, especially after we find out where things land at the end of this legislative session. So that's my little update on the RPAC Hill Day last week. Here we are, 2024. In January, we're kicking it off with a nice dreary day. Um, on a personal note, it was a long drive for me from Duval to Olympia, not, and it was held actually in a little casino in Shelton, so a little outside of Olympia. And I, I, I had just some, some personal overwhelm. I am not a politician. My curls were, I was having all sorts of <laughs> um, wardrobe malfunctions. My curls were falling out kind of like today with the drizzly weather, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to, to <laughs> feel put together sometimes. Um, and I had, I had this like, man, I don't belong here kind of feeling, but really anyone should have the freedom to go and sit with the person that's making a lot of powerful decisions about the land that they live in. So don't be afraid to meet with your legislators. Don't be afraid at all. Um, that's another big takeaway is that I, I was there with a friend, Kyoko, also on the Government Affairs Board. She's the mayor of Mount Lake Terrace, shout out to Kyoko, for helping me meet the Secretary of State, her friend Bob. So that was a really cool experience. Um, Bob likes dragons and Marvel and funny things, just like I do. So it's really a, a human connected experience to see that all these people care about the same things I do. They care about affordable housing. They care about a safe place to raise their family. They care about good education. Um, and so even though I felt a little bit intimidated, a little bit overwhelmed, walking on marble floor with my torn tights and my messy hair, um, I'm gonna keep showing up. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna work on my hair, um, 
and I'm going to keep building houses. So um, I said too much, 10 minutes, so that's my update, and hope you're all doing well, and catch you on the next update.